In this video, I will show you how to install FreeBSD the right way. FreeBSD is an open source Unix operating system, much like Linux. The vanilla FreeBSD is a bit more tricky to install because you need to install it using the console, so that's why in this video I will go step by step and show you how to install it from scratch. If you're instead looking for an easy way how to install FreeBSD, in my previous video I installed GhostBSD which has a GUI installer, so if you're interested you can find the link to the video up there or down in the description. As in my previous installation videos, I will install FreeBSD on a USB drive. This will not be a live USB drive meant primarily for testing, this will be a full installation on a USB drive and that means that you can update the system and everything you do or change on the USB drive will be saved back to the drive. This does not necessarily mean that you need to install it on a USB drive, you can also use a hard drive instead. The installation procedure is the same. But before we start with the installation, welcome to the channel. Here you can find topics about Linux, Docker, game dev or software development in general or short agile dev art. If you like that kind of content, then give a like, subscribe and hit the bell icon to get notified when I release new videos. All the links from this video are down in the description and also down there are the timestamps so you can skip any part if you want. I am now here on the official FreeBSD website and the first thing that we need to do, we need to download the ISO. The ISO image contains the live environment and the installer, so let's download that one. Go to download FreeBSD. Here we can see the latest release is version 14. If you're using an older 32-bit machine, then use this one, i386. I'm not using an older machine, so I will go with AMD64. Here you have different ISOs that you can download. I will go with the standard one, AMD64 Disk 1. Let's download it. Now wait for the download, it has 1.1 gigabytes. Finished. And here is the ISO. As said, this is the ISO with the installer and first we need to flash this one on a USB drive. And then we will use this USB drive to install FreeBSD on a second USB drive. If you're instead installing FreeBSD on a hard drive, then you don't need the second USB drive. But the first one with this ISO you will need, because this one contains the installer. Now in case you're installing FreeBSD on a USB drive as I am, then the first USB drive can be any off the shelf stick, it doesn't really matter. But the second one with the full installation should be a more faster one. It should have a decent read-write speed, otherwise the whole system will be very slow, you will get really frustrated and it doesn't matter if you have the newest machine, if the USB drive with the operating system is the bottleneck. So get a decent USB drive, I'm using one with 128GB and you can find the referral link down in the description. Now with that said, let's flash this ISO on the first USB drive and therefore we will use a tool called Rufus. So this is Rufus, the official website, and I almost always use this one, so let's download it. Scroll down, here is the link, download complete, let's open it, and here it is. Now plug in the first USB drive, the off-the-shelf stick, I will do it as well. Rufus already recognized it, now let's select the ISO, here it is, open. It is a hybrid ISO, that's okay. Leave everything else on default and select start. Now it warns us that everything that is currently on the USB drive will be deleted. So if you have something important on there, make a backup first. I don't have anything important on there, so I will just continue. And now let's wait. Finished. Close. The USB drive with this ISO is now ready and now we need to boot into it. Make sure to disable secure boot and fast boot in your BIOS. Then plug in the USB drive or just leave it plugged in as in my case. Restart the system and then while the system is restarting you need to press one of the function keys. Usually it's F11 or F12, it depends on your PC manufacturer. Then you should get the boot menu and inside the menu select the USB drive and it should boot into it. I will do the same on my machine as well and I'll see you after the reboot. So here I am running the FreeBSD ISO and it already launched the FreeBSD installer. As you can see the FreeBSD installer is running inside the console. If you are planning to install FreeBSD on a USB drive, like I am, then now it's the right time to plug in the second USB drive. If instead you are installing on a hard drive, then you can skip this step. So let's do it. 
Now let's go install. I will just go with the defaults. So default key map is okay. Here you can set a host name for your machine. I will leave it empty. Then you can select optional components that should be installed. I will select ports, press space, and the system source tree, and OK, enter. How would you like to partition your disk? I will select ZFS. If you want to encrypt your disk, you can do it here, but I will leave it as it is and go proceed with the installation. I don't need redundancy, so I will go with the default and OK. Now this is the important part. Here you need to select the drive where you want to install FreeBSD. In my case, I want to install it on a USB drive, and this is the one. Press space to mark it. If you're instead installing on a hard drive, then you need to select the hard drive here. Enter. Now it warns us that everything that is currently on the selected drive will be deleted. So if you have something important on there, make a backup first. I don't have anything important on there, so I will just continue and select yes. Now let's wait for the installation. Now we need to set the root password, so let's do that and retype. Now we need to configure the network interface. In my case, I only have wired connection. If you have a Wi-Fi connection here, then of course you can configure that here as well. In my case, I will go with the wired connection and enter. I want to configure IP version 4 and I want to use DHCP. We can also configure IP version 6, but I don't want to. I'm happy with the configuration and OK. Now select your region. I will go with Europe and select your country. Central European time is OK and the date as well. Also, let's set the time. Here you can choose services that should run at startup. For me, the default is OK. If you want, you can enable some hardening features, but for me, default is OK. Now let's add a user. So add your username. UID, I will go with the default. Login group is OK. No other groups. Default class. SH is OK. So I'm just pressing enter here. Home directory is OK. Default permissions. I want to use password-based authentication. Yes is the default. Use an empty password, no is the default. Random one, no, and enter your password. Retype. Lock the account, I don't want to lock it, so no is the default. Here you can see the summary. Is the summary okay? Yes, it is. Do you want to add another user? No is the default, so that's okay. Now, if you forgot to configure something, you can configure it here, but for me, I will apply the configuration and exit installer. Now, do I want to open the shell and make manual modifications? I don't want it. We are done. Now we need to reboot and boot into this newly installed FreeBSD. If you just installed on a USB drive as I am, then you need to again open the boot menu while the system is restarting and select the newly installed USB drive. And make sure you don't boot into this live environment again. Now I will reboot and I'll see you in the newly installed FreeBSD. Now here we are, this is full FreeBSD and in my case this one is now running from a USB drive. As you can see by default we only get the console window, so there is not much installed by default. It is similar like on Arch Linux where you also don't need to install a desktop environment and in this case we don't have a desktop environment. The vanilla Arch Linux also has a console installer similar like FreeBSD has. So the setup process for FreeBSD and Arch Linux are somehow similar. In a previous video, I also showed how to install Arch Linux on a USB drive. So if you want to install Arch Linux on a USB drive yourself, then you can check out the link to the video up there or down in the description. Now here on FreeBSD, you can now log in and use it as it is. Or you can install a desktop environment, like for instance the XFCE desktop. And that's exactly what I will do here. First we need to log in, and I will log in as a root user. So write root and the root password that we set previously during the installation. I am now logged in as the root user and now the best practice would be to update the system. So that's what I will do. PKG update. Yes. Perfect. Now PKG upgrade. Done. And now we can start installing the desktop environment. But before we do that, I will add another screen here and let's clear the console. If you're installing FreeBSD for the first time, then this handbook is definitely a lifesaver. 
I also did a video about why FreeBSD is better than Linux and there I also mentioned this handbook and the documentation as one of the reasons. If you're interested, you can find the link to the video up there or down in the description. We already installed FreeBSD and the next point is the X Windows system. So here we need to install Xorg. Here is the command. So let's execute it. PKG install Xorg. Yes. Now it says that we need to add the user to the video group using this command down here. So let's do it. PW group mode video dash M. I will add my user and the root user also. Now we need to install the graphics driver. I'm using an Intel NVIDIA combo and here are the modules that I need to install. And if I scroll down first the Intel section, let's execute this command first. PKG install DRM K mode. Yes. It's the same package also for the AMD driver. Perfect. Not a second command. Sysrc kld underline list plus equals i915kms. This command makes sure that the driver module is loaded on boot. So let's execute. And now in addition, let's also install those packages. PKG install libvA Intel driver and Mesa libs and Mesa DRI install. All right, let's move to the NVIDIA section. Here again, we need to install the NVIDIA driver module and also add it to the KLD list. So let's do it. Install NVIDIA driver. Now you probably noticed when you install something here on FreeBSD, you get a message from the package maintainer. The message usually says what you need to do next. And now in this case, it says that we need to add the module to the KLD list and that we also need to enable Linux support. And this means also loading the Linux module on boot. By doing that, you can also run Linux native applications on FreeBSD. So yes, FreeBSD also supports Linux applications. So let's do what it says. Sysrc KLD list plus equals NVIDIA mode set. And let's also add Linux and Linux 64 bit. And Linux enable, yes. Now, since I'm using a hybrid graphics card, I also need to install one additional package. So PKG install NVIDIA hybrid graphics. And yes, again. All right, here it says that we need to enable the NVIDIA XORG service on startup. So let's do that. Sysrc NVIDIA underline XORG underline enable equals yes. Perfect. And now we are finally ready to install the desktop environment. So let's go to chapter eight, desktop environments. And here let's find XFCE. Here is the install command. So let's run it. PKG install XFCE. Done. Next, we need to edit the FS tab file. So we need to add this one line to the file. To edit a file, I will install Vim. And let's do vim slash etc slash fs tab. Now, if you want to edit something here, then move the cursor to the right position, for instance, to the end and press I. Now, as you can see, I'm now in the insert mode. Now let's place the cursor to the end of the line and press enter. And now just type in what you want. So proc, I will add a few spaces. It doesn't matter how many spaces you add. Then slash proc. Again, few spaces, proc fs, spaces rw, spaces zero, spaces zero. I think this is it. Yes, it is. Now press escape and write a colon, w and q. This will save the changes and quit. Enter. Perfect. Now we need to enable dbus on startup. So let's do it. Sys RC dbus underline enable equals yes. And now it says that we need to install LightDM and also enable it on startup. So let's do it. PKG install LightDM and LightDM GTK greeter and Sys RC LightDM underline enable equals yes. Perfect. We are almost done. In addition, I will install sudo. 
pkg install sudo and I will add my user to the sudo users. So write vsudo. Hmm, let's try with sudo. So sudo vsudo. For some reason vsudo doesn't work, so let's do it the old fashioned way. Let's do vim usr local etc su doers enter. And now here, scroll down to this line and then place the cursor under the line, press I and write your username, space, and now write the same as in the line above. That's it, press escape, write colon, WQ and exclamation mark, enter. Perfect, all done. Now we can reboot and boot into the XFCE desktop. I will do the same on my machine as well and I'll see you after the reboot. And here it is, this is now the XFCE desktop running on FreeBSD. As you can see it looks exactly like Linux, I would not be able to tell the difference honestly. So this is Tunar, the file manager, let's see the settings manager. So here you can change the different settings as you would usually do on XFCE. Let's check the terminal, here let's do uname-a. So yes, this is the FreeBSD version 14. Let's install NeoFetch, of course, with sudo and NeoFetch. Again, FreeBSD 14, XFCE version 4.18 and the memory consumption is about 1.7 gigabytes. Seems a bit high for the XFCE desktop, but it is how it is. If you like my videos and also want to support me, I also have a Patreon page. I really appreciate all the support I get and it's because of your support that I can make videos like this one. So thank you very much and the link to Patreon is up there or down in the description. So here I showed you how you can install the vanilla FreeBSD from scratch. FreeBSD is an awesome operating system, in my opinion a perfect replacement for Linux. Unfortunately it isn't as popular as Linux and in my previous video I gave you my explanation why this is the case, so if you're interested you can find the link to the video up there or down in the description. And that's it for this video, thank you very much for watching. If you like this video then like and subscribe and if you really like the video down there is a super thanks so you can buy me a coffee for instance so I can make more of those awesome videos. Thank you very much and I'll see you in the next one. Bye.